What's up everybody, for today's video, I'm gonna teach you guys how I create this panorama image of Scripps Pier at La Jolla, California, also known as La Jala, California to the tourist. <laughs> now, uh, somebody online reached out to me and they're wondering how I edited this photo, so I decided to put a uh, video together for you guys explaining my methods. Um, now, this isn't a true panorama, this is actually interpolated pictures that have been upscaled and stacked to reduce noise but also increase sharpness to uh, basically allow me to crop it in a panorama uh, ratio and still maintain very good quality it might not be a true panorama but this thing could be blown up to about 10 to 12 foot no problem so let's jump over to the pictures and i'll explain how i did all that so my settings here were ISO 64, 24 millimeters, F16 at 10 seconds. And this is with a D810. And I had a ND filter on there, but it wasn't really dark enough of a filter for me to do a long exposure um, in one shot. Plus I had um, other people waiting to kind of jump in this spot. So I didn't want to hog up this area for too long. And that's why I did this whole stacking method um, long exposure to create my panoramic image. Now I knew I wanted roughly a two minute exposure so what I ended up doing is taking 13 photos at 10 seconds and when we stack them it's going to be you know a, a two minute plus 10 second exposure when it's all said and done and uh, we're going to do that in Photoshop but before I do that I'm going to do some basic edits here in Lightroom. So I'm gonna drop the highlights a little bit. I'll put that at negative 40. And I'm gonna increase my shadows to around 50. And the dynamic range for the Nikon is really good that I didn't need to do any bracketed exposures to really pull out the shadows. And when I start stacking my images, it's gonna reduce noise. So I'm not too worried about any noise accumulation uh, that happens in the shadows right here, which is very minimal, um, to be honest. So as we go down the line, we can mess around with the vibrance and saturation on the final image. So uh, I'm not going to do that right now. I'll increase the sharpness a little bit, put that around 50. I'll probably increase it a little bit more in Photoshop. I'm not going to touch the noise reduction. We'll remove chromatic aberrations, yes. Enable profile corrections to kind of get rid of some of the vignetting and any distortion. You could play around with your distortion levels. I'm gonna leave mine around 80. And I just want to fix my horizon. It looks like it's a little slanted. So we'll grab this tool right here. Put it on this corner, and I'm going to extend it to that corner. Okay, that looks pretty good. So next thing we want to do is bring all these photos into Photoshop. So go to Photo, Edit In, Open as Layers in Photoshop. Okay, so once your photos are in Photoshop, what I do is I take all my images, select them, go to image, image size, and then I would increase the resolution that I want to be. Um, for this particular image, I made it 30 inches wide at a resolution of 300. So effectively, you could blow that up to around 90 inches wide, but um, it shouldn't have any problem printing that large. And for resample, I change this to preserve details and I leave uh, the reduced noise on zero. Now, um, I actually ended up reducing the size of these images just because I'm recording this video, but you would just hit OK. And depending on how many photos you have, this process could take a little bit of time. Uh, it's a little taxing on your computer, so just be aware of that. So once those photos have had a chance to resize, you're going to select them all and we're going to convert them to a smart object. Okay, so once it's been converted to a smart object, you're going to go to layer, 
smart objects, stack mode, mean. Now, I already checked my photos, so I knew they lined up pretty well. Um, when you're dealing with long exposures or possibly hitting your tripod, make sure those images were aligned properly. Um, sometimes you have to do an auto align in Photoshop. In my case, they were very close and I did not. So now these photos have been stacked and it effectively created a roughly two minute exposure. You see here the, the water is nice and smooth and the clouds have been elongated as well. Um, so that's exactly what we're looking for. So I'm actually going to flatten this image. And I'm going to make some copies of it to work from. Now, um, I have Raya Pro, which you don't need this for this step, but uh, it kind of helps out a little bit. And what I like to use is the sensor dust. And what this is going to do is create this layer right here. And it's going to show me where there's a lot of dust from my sensor that I've got to clean up. Now you don't want to work on this layer. This is just for, you know, to show you where everything's at, but uh, you could either hide it or just click on the layer below it. And that's what we're going to take all the sensor dust off of. So I'm going to switch to spot healing and I'm just going to go here and start removing these dust spots. And it looks like I'm not doing anything, but in reality, I'm working on this layer, even though I had that other layer visible. So I'm just switching back and forth to show you. Now, if the cloning does something a little weird, just switch to healing brush and you could also use that as well. All right, so I'm going to speed this up so you guys don't have to watch me take away every piece of dust there is. Okay, so once you get rid of your dust spots, um, I'm actually going to make another copy. And this time I'm going to go to Filter. And I like to use Nick's, uh, the Nick Collection. Or Nick. Nick Collection. One of my favorite things to use is Glamour Glow. Increase the saturation a little bit. And since I have like pillars and everything like that, I'm not going to go too crazy with the glow. Um, it kind of makes it a little too soft. It, it really depends on the actual image, on how intense you want this glow to be. I'll just kind of keep it subtle at 25. Next, I'm going to add another filter. Let's go with a skylight filter. I love this for sunsets. It just really, um, it makes the colors pop. So I'll show you without it. You know, it looks kind of flat. And then we'll put this around 25%. And it really brings that sky alive. I think that's all I'm going to use for this particular image. Um, just hit OK. Alright, so here's the after and here's the before. You just see it's a lot warmer, um, just a little more vibrant. And if it's too strong, you can just take down the opacity a little bit. Now we can flatten all the images together. And the last thing I want to do is go to Filter, Sharpen, um, Smart Sharpen. And here I'm going to increase this to around 160. Uh, depending on your image, your camera, your lens, this is all going to vary. So 
you don't might not want to use my exact settings uh, that I'm going with, but just be aware of that and then hit OK. You know, and since we are dealing with some architecture, we got these pillars. Um, I'm going to bring in some guidelines and that way I could really straighten these out a little bit better. So let's just go to, let's make one more copy. Next, I'm going to go to edit, transform, and you can use skew for certain things. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to use warp because I got to move these over just a hair. Hit enter when you're done. All right, that's pretty good. Now we're gonna bring it back to Lightroom. Flatten the image, close it, and then hit save. Now I already have an image over there, so I'm not gonna save this, and let's just jump right over to Lightroom. Okay, so now we're back in Lightroom with our new image, and uh, if we wanna do some further editing here, we can. So I can increase the shadows a little bit more. The image is a lot cleaner now that I've stacked them. So I could get away with pushing the shadows even further. I could also decrease my highlights if I want. Um, maybe add a little vignette. Uh, let's bump up the contrast. We can pull up the vibrance and saturation as well. And then the last thing I would do is crop this as a 16 by 7 to give me that nice panorama view. All right, let me put that back to normal because I want to show you guys the difference between a single image that I didn't blow up or anything like that versus these stacked images that I was able to increase the resolution and show you how well it works, even though it's not a true panorama. So let's go over to the library and I can compare these two images right here and zoom in and just kind of show you the difference. So on my left is the image that was uh, interpolated and I increased the resolution and on the right is just one photo raw. And this is at four to one, which is like really zoomed in there. And you could see um, how much more detail there is and how much the noise has been reduced. Now you can see here, even in the shadow area, like you got some color noise going on on the single raw, but on these stacked images, um, I was able to push these shadows a lot higher and uh, still not have to worry too much about that noise. It's just really impressive what you could do um, if you're in a crunch and you can't pull off a panorama, this is a great alternative. Um, it's not exactly the same, but uh, it doesn't hurt. You know, it, it's a really good way to just create high quality images that could be blown up really big for your wall. And uh, you'll be very pleased. So that about wraps it up. Thank you all for watching. If you're interested in any of the gear that I use for my photography, I will leave that information in the description below. And I'm still undergoing some renovations, but I'm gonna try and squeeze in these videos for you guys, so stay tuned. Take care, bye-bye.